Thank you very much for coming. Welcome to everyone that's here. It, it's just wonderful to see you. And I'm so happy um, that, that you're all here. And I hope you enjoy the new format that we have today. This is a little bit of a stretch for us. We've gone into um, a different venue, called it a different um, title. It's Leadership Insights, and we chose that name on purpose because today is going to be filled with insights. And we're, we're leaving all that to Paul to provide you with a tremendous amount of ahas today. Okay. First and foremost, I would like to thank all our sponsors. Um, uh, Knightsbridge um, Human Capital Solution, who is the main sponsor, and is also the sponsor for the National Passion Capitalist um, Award, which either Catherine and Paul will probably talk about later as well. AccuCaps Industries, you can thank them this morning for the wonderful um, um, continental breakfast that you had, the juice and the coffees. Um, Ernst & Young, book sponsors. Um, Libro Financial Groups, book sponsors. Fanshawe College, who are the media sponsors. So Fanshawe has provided not only the, um, um, the, the, the well, the, their sponsorship contribution is basically the videographers that are going to be taping today, and the photographer that is going to be taking photographs all come from Fanshawe. Um, then there's um, uh, Western Libraries. Uh, Western has a, a new and it's the it's it's um, a fundraising development um, uh, program within Western Libraries, and they have a program called the Book Plates, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, Black Cat Concepts, all the printed material that are here are um, uh, uh, thanks to Black Cat. Uh, concepts. So why do we do leadership insights? Genesis focuses on leadership, and we, but basically we focus on people because it takes people to be leaders. And um, um, I always like thinking in, in terms of analogy. So I don't know if you're all familiar with the book Good to Great um, by Jim Collins. He has a scenario in his book about the bus. And I love that analogy because when it comes to leadership, it's really about the bus. It's, it's, it's all about whether or not you're on the right bus, whether you're in the right seat on the bus, whether, you're, whether you need to move. So what Genesis does is, is very much um, surrounding the bus scenario. We coach. And the coaching aspect of the bus is, are you on the right bus? And if you're on the right bus, that's great. But if you're, perhaps you're not on the right seat, or not sitting in the right seat in the bus. So we coach, and we coach individuals to move the career forward. The second thing that we do is strategy and people. So do you have the right people on in the, and in the right seats on the bus? Or should they be on the bus at all? So it's strategic workforce planning, talent acquisition. That's the second component of Genesis. Third component is training and development. So it's days like today where we put on um, events on leadership and we bring in leaders to talk about what, what has motivated them. And it, it's, it's basically a showcase of this is what leadership is. This, these are people who put their hand up consistently, where, it, where they may be in a room of perhaps even some unfriendlies where it's a little bit nerve-wracking to put your hand up, but they do. Their entire life is about putting their hand up, and we want to inspire. Um, uh, Genesis is stepping into a new, um, a new era. We're actually we have developed a leadership program, but I'll talk to you about that a little bit later. So leadership is something that everybody talks about. There's ethical leadership. There's courageous leadership. There's value-centered leadership. Transcendental leadership. Good leadership, bad leadership, we all choose. We choose what kind of a leader that we're going to be. We choose every day to be, as the Navy SEALs say, to be all that we can be. Or we choose to be less than all that we can be. It's our choice. Leadership is a choice. It's not a title. And I've said that at every single one of the leadership events that we've put on, that it is a choice. You have the ability to choose to stand up and, be, and have people take you seriously. You have the, the ability to choose to stand up, put your hand up, and be noted. Or you have the ability to choose to sit at the back of the room and pretend like you were never there. So we believe that everybody leads, not just the upper echelons, but everyone. So we put these programs on that will inspire you. We put these programs on to provide an aha moment, a watershed moment, a moment that may define you a moment that may be something that you'll take forward and say, that's what I can be. That's what I'm going to be. That's who I am, and that's who I will be from now on. 
So um, did a little bit of a, um, a talk before about the new training program that we have. In, in the, um, the clips that you have with your book that was provided to you this morning, there's a little flyer about Leadership Insights. That's the new venue that, um, that Genesis is stepping into. I've been blessed in my, li in my life. I've had people um, that, that have come into my life that have been absolutely extraordinary. And Vicki Smith is one of those individuals. Vicki is um, an individual that, that I've partnered up with to provide leadership um, insights, the training program. Vicki is an internationally known um, trainer of leadership. She's not just um, uh, the type of person who goes into first and second world countries. She's actually gone into third world countries. And on the bio you, um, that's, that's written up with the uh, pamphlet, you'll see Vicki's been into countries like Afghanistan. She's been into Bosnia. She's gone into Syria. People who know her say that war follows her. So. <laughs> Um, so Vicki and I have partnered up to provide Leadership Insights, a training program, and our first program starts in January 2013. It's a program developed to help you be the courageous leader that you can be, or a program that you can send your, your, your workforce to, to help them become not just managers of people, but leaders of people. Leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. It's a famous quote from Tom Peters, and I believe that. And I know most of you in this room believe that or have probably even heard the, 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 um, the saying, better leadership through an organization equals better engagement. It, it, innovators, not imitators, um, leaders, not followers, courageous individuals that put their hand up consistently, people who will make a difference, they will engage, and all that will provide you with, um, with better value for your organization, increase shareholders' value, enlightenment and, and enlightens and thrills customers and clients. And when you have customers and clients that are thrilled with the people that you have in your team and, and what's being produced, you have clients that are thrilled about you. And that's a good thing. So there's a flyer in your book that talks about that. And if you want anything, any more information, please feel free to, to speak to either Vicki or I. Vicki, unfortunately, is not here today. She's actually in New York. She's developing the next stage of a leadership program that's um, going internationally. So today, we have one speaker. And those of you that have been here before know that normally we have more speakers than just one. But Paul is such an absolutely extraordinary individual with a fabulous message that we thought that this was the venue to have one speaker. So he's, he's innovative. He's inspiring. And I have to tell you the story of the first time that I actually met him. Paul won't remember. But it was, um, he, um, Paul is one of the lead leaders and the organizer of the Ride to Conquer Cancer. And um, those of you that know me know that I've lost my mother to cancer a few years ago. And that inspired me to do something different. But I heard Paul just browsing around on YouTube and I heard this absolutely inspiring message and I thought, I'm going to do that. And I signed and I paid my registration. And, and, and I committed to raising a minimum of $2,500. And then I took a really long gulp. I thought, oh my God, I have committed myself to ride 200 kilometers in two days on a cycle. So I think I better get into shape. And I did. And, um, and, and I met Paul on the first ride that I went on to. And when you do these rides, there's about five to 6,000 riders. And there's everything from the $20 garage sale special bike to the $30,000 Pinarello that is, that, is, that is on this ride. And I went with my normal little road bike, not clipped in or anything. And I thought, OK, this is going to be fine. I'm going to do this 25 kilometers at a time. Paul was coming out of one of the pit stops, and I was going in. And here's this man who stopped. And he spoke to me, and, and I thought, okay, that's kind of nice, because everybody was quite friendly on the ride. I mean, there's 6,000 of you that are sharing the common goal. Get to the end of this ride as quick as we can and survive it. So um, he spoke to me, and, and, and I didn't, he didn't introduce himself. Um, you know, he just said he was Paul. But he didn't tell me he was the CEO of the Princess Margaret Foundation, that he was the guy so to speak. He had a helmet on, bike shorts, and everybody looks funny in a bike shorts and helmet. It was raining, so I mean, we were all cold and, and, and not in the best of moods. So he, that was my first um, meeting um, with Paul, but he inspired me, and I have to admit that, that it inspired me to th you know, think, okay, I can keep doing this. When he drove away, when he rode away, I happened to no notice the nameplate on the back of his bike, because you wear, there's, there's a nameplate that hangs down, down from the seat of your bike, and it said Paul Al at Aloff's, and I thought, oh my God, that's the guy. So if he can do this, so can I. 
and I kept going. And that was the first time that I finished it. I've done the ride three other times since, and um, been able to to help Princess Margaret. Um, actually raise a tremendous amount of money all to cancer research which there isn't anybody in the world anymore that hasn't been touched in one way or another by cancer so thank you very much for all the work that's being done in in order to help um, alleviate that absolutely horrendous disease so i'm going to introduce <laughs> i'd like to introduce katherine cops from um, knightsbridge human capital to introduce paul Good morning. I'm Catherine Kopp. I'm the Vice President of uh, Knightsbridge for Southwestern Ontario, and it is a delight for us not only to sponsor this event, but also to welcome and introduce Paul uh, Aloffs to you. Um, I know he's going to talk about other people's stories of, of passion, so I'm going to give you the brief outline of his own rather remarkable career. I know some of this is in the back of the book, but I'm going to give you the, uh, the highlights because it's very impressive. Um, in Knightsbridge, we love eclectic careers, and uh, this, is, this is a great one. Award-winning senior executive, and he has worked in retail and entertainment, internet marketing, and social enterprise, just to name a few, from Windsor and a graduate of University of Windsor and uh, has an MBA from York in Toronto. He has also worked with, um, as president of HMV, Music Stores in Canada, the Disney, North American Disney Stores, and uh, he is also with a mp3.com, which some of you may know of, named for Canada's top 40 under 40 business leaders. He has also been honored by the University of Windsor with um, Bryden Alumni Award from York University and also from the Schulich School of Business. In addition to his extensive experience as an executive, Paul is also an active philanthropist and not-for-profit volunteer. We were speaking over coffee with his wife, Sheila, and she said they're on the go all the time. There's always something that, uh, that they're doing. And he has served as a board member for many organizations, including Covenant House, Union for International Cancer Control, and Osmosis Research, among others. And as we all know, he is the CEO just almost 10 years now with the Princess Margaret Hospital Foundation. And the new, uh, the new big sterling goal is one billion, and I'm quite sure that that's going to happen. Passion Capital is, is actually his first book, and it's a special relationship with Knightsbridge because we ran into each other, um, Paul and Knightsbridge, mm, a year or two ago. And we all sort of found this Passion Capital idea very enticing to the point where we joined with some other organizations and have put together what has now been the first Passion Capital Awards. They're Canadian companies who exemplify this um, ability to have special success and a special vision of, of their own passion in their business and organization. Um, our award ceremony was, uh, the first one, was in the past uh, month. And I'm um, happy to say the regional winner in, uh, in southwestern Ontario was Good Life Fitness from here in, uh, in London. It's a wonderful story. It'll be coming up again. Um, and if you know of, of a company that you think may be a great uh, nominee, you can even nominate yourself for that matter, um, you can go to the, well, the, the site's out there, but it's the Canada uh, Passion Capital Canada. I'm getting it all wrong. Canada Passion Capitalists. There we go, dot com and uh, you can see more information, but it's, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful way of finding the hidden stories in Canada. So without further ado, let me welcome our guest speaker today, Paul Aloffs. Thank you. Catherine, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Can everybody hear okay? It's all right? Thank you so much for that uh, kind introduction. Many thanks to Knightsbridge. David Shaw, the founder of Knightsbridge, a great passion capitalist. When I was getting going, uh, writing the first six or seven chapters of the book, uh, there's about five people I thought were great examples of what passion capital is all about. And I gave them the first uh, six or seven chapters, which is something that takes a fair amount of courage to do because you, you know, if you ask for feedback from people who are honest and straightforward and whose experiences, David, Shaw, you're going to get some direct feedback back. So lots of uh, good input, but this idea is something that Knightsbridge has taken and really taken across the country. And we have 10 uh, excellent award winners of the Fashion Capitalists of the Year. 
um, from the, the Montreal Symphony to the Calgary Stampede, from Shoppers Drug Mart to a small three-store chain in Halifax called Pete's. Just an amazing retail story. So thank you so much to Knightsbridge and Loretta. You are you're a passion capitalist. I was just thinking you were talking about the Navy SEALs. I think you're the Navy SEALs of the uh, coaching and consulting uh, and management business. So thank you so much <laughs> for, for bringing us all together today. Thank you so much. And thank you all for, for coming out this morning. So I'd like you to, uh, to join me on a journey over the next hour. Uh, I'd like you to join me on a journey. And the destination uh, I can describe in one word. And that word has seven letters. And the number seven figures prominently in, in uh, the next hour, what I'm going to talk about. I'd like you to join me on a journey. And the destination for our journey uh, is success. I want to talk to you about success. But I don't want to talk to you about my success. I want to talk to you about your success. I want to talk to you about your success for your career, for your company, for your cause, for your community, even for your country. But this is all about your lawn. This isn't about my lawn seed. This is about how you are going to define success and your career, the cause that you might serve, the company that you work for, the community that you're involved with. This is about your own definition of success. So the seven letter word in our destination today is to explore this idea of success. Not a generic definition, your definition. Because everybody's idea of success and definition of success is going to be as individual as your DNA. And as a matter of fact, the other part, the other uh, uh, key seven uh, letter word I'm going to talk about today, passion. Passion is as individual as your DNA as well. And what I want to talk about is how passion, and specifically passion with a plan, passion with a structure around it, where you can take your passion and actually build it into a tangible asset, what I think is the world's most valuable asset. When you take that passion, you direct it, and you build it, and there are seven steps that I'm going to talk to you about. There's a number seven again over the next uh, 55 minutes or so. Those seven steps, if you take your passion and you figure out how to put it to work, how to invest it, you will have uh, a way of turbocharging your own success and your own definition of success. Okay, so I want to talk to you about passion, but in particular, I want to focus on your own definition of success. And I'd like to, at the end of this hour, and plus some Q&A that we'll engage with, I'd like you to be a little bit inspired, but more importantly informed, about how to take your passion and put it to work. Concrete steps about how to put it to work. 